Go ahead, and if you wouldn't mind, in the chat, tell me if you're at all, if I'm going too slow or too fast, or if you're at all familiar with uh, Google Earth. So it, sometimes it's hard to know if, if there's no, if, you, if you've had no experience with Google Earth at all, it might be, I might need to go a lot slower. Um, but if you are familiar, and most of you are familiar, then I can go a little bit quicker. So uh, let me know in the chat. All right, so one of the features uh, of Google Earth that they have that some of you guys might have got to play with a little bit before I started was the, there's a quiz feature now. Um, so some of their pre-made uh, tours and, and such have these quiz options. And I'll go in when I give you a little bit of a tour and show you some of those. So there are some uh, options there. Some of them are just fun, uh, like the summer blockbuster one that I linked to, but others are, they have a little bit more meat to them. Okay. All right, so we're going to be talking about virtual field trips with Google Earth projects. Now on Friday, I did virtual field trips with um, Google Tour Creator. And I was telling you guys that today I would be doing something with Google Tour Builder and Earth projects. However, um, two days prior to that, so I guess like August 26th, Google came out with an announcement that they're going to discontinue Tor Builder within this school year, so or within this year. So um, we elected to not go ahead and share that information. It seems like if you're going to go through any kind of work to put together a tour, that you probably weren't going to want it to be something that you could only use one time. So uh, we scratched the Google Tor Builder and are just going to share Google Earth projects with you today. So. Some of the features of Google Earth projects, and we'll get in to Google, Google Earth here in a second, and I'm gonna show you each of these features, just a kind of overview. Voyager is their pre-made tours, tours that were already made by either Google or by one of their partner companies or organizations. The I'm feeling lucky option is just, you click on it, it takes you anywhere, anywhere in the world, and it kind of gives you a little bit of a snippet about what that place is like or a picture or something like that. Google Projects is what we're going to spend the bulk of our time on today. That's how you can make a virtual field trip within Google Earth. So uh, that's where we'll spend the bulk of our work today. There is an option to change the different map styles, the way that the map looks for you. And I'll show you all those different options when we get in there. And there is an option to measure for distances between locations as, where, as well as the area of, of a particular location. So, and I'll show you where that button is as well. So those are some of the features of um, Google Earth. Today, I'm going to give you a tutorial over the projects piece. And these are the elements of the projects that I'm going to go over today. So how to add features, if you were with me on Friday, they um, in Google Tour Creator, they call them scenes. And in projects, they call them features. Um, and I'll show you how to add descriptions, images, videos, which is new and different. In Google Tour Creator, they don't have images. Or I'm sorry, they don't have videos. Um, we'll show you how to draw a line or a shape on top of Google Earth. And then how to add full screen slides. So. Um, the biggest difference between Tor Creator and Google Earth Projects is that Tor Creator is what you're using to create an expedition, one that you can use on these, these goggles that we talked about, or you can use it online. It's like a 3D tour. Um, Google Earth Projects, more kind of like a slideshow with Google Earth next to it, going so you can go through different locations. Um, and you'll see that as we get in. So let's go ahead and I'm going to open up Google Earth Projects. If you are interested, if, you, if you're familiar and you want to open a, uh, a side screen and, or split your screen and, and kind of move along with me, um, you can. Uh, if you want to just you know, minimize me and listen to me talk while you try to work through it, you can do that as well. Uh, and I will try to come back and answer any questions um, when, I'm kind of, when I'm near the end of it so that um, I can kind of chug along uh, for you guys. So this is Google Earth. Um, this is what you're seeing on your screen, I hope. I hope everybody's seeing my screen okay. If you're not, let me know in the chat and I'll stop and try to fix that. Um, 
And one of the things I want to point out before I open up or launch Earth, there's two buttons for launching, one right here and one right here. There is a button up here at the top called resources. And that is where I can go out and I can look at the various resources that are available from Google Earth for education. So if I go out to the resources tab and um, scroll down here, oops, there's this Google Earth education option and I can click on that and it'll give me some information about different things that they have available for educators. It's kind of oddly laid out um, and I'm not exactly sure why it looks like this. I've changed the dimensions of my screen to see um, if I can fix that layout and it, it still looks like this. So, but it does have some really interesting things. So if you're at all interested in seeing what they have for educators um, in their resources tab, you can go there. All right, so let's go ahead and launch Google Earth, and we'll just do a little tour and then start with the projects piece. So, all right, so uh, Google Earth, all of its tools and icons, or most of them, are on the left-hand side, and so at the top you have the three lines. That is their menu, so I can click on it and see their menu. But the menu is always there. It's just kind of minimized as well. So these, these are the menu options. Down in the bottom right-hand corner is where you can turn the globe to have it go wherever you like. Um, it's also where you can turn it from being 2D to 3D. You can zoom in and out. Um, and it's where your little guy is. I wish I knew what that little guy's name was. I meant to look that up. Um, I'm just going to call him little guy. The little guy is right down here, and I'll show you why he's important here in a little bit. So um, let's go ahead and just go through the different features or the different elements here. The first is a search box, which I will come back to. So we're going to use the search box quite a bit whenever um, we're setting up our project, so I'll come back to that one. The next is this little gear uh, picky thing, <laughs> gear do picky. Um, it's the Voyager icon, and this is where you can go to find the pre-made tours by either Google or by a partner organization. Um, so you'll see, for example, there's one here uh, called Dis Discover Egypt, and this is by Google, but let's go ahead. It's Google also. Google. Here's one, Turning the Tide for Whale Sharks, and this one's put together by the Wildlife Trust of India. So there's different organizations that put these together. So on the Voyager section, they have games, which are essentially quizzes um, over various topics. So you can scroll through and see all the different uh, quizzes that they have available. They have a section about different layers. So looking at the Earth through like satellite imagery or um, snow cover or uh, like cloud cover and that kind of thing. They have street view. So these are tours that are using all their street view imagery. So you, I know a lot of you guys were probably here on Friday, but you know those cars that drive around with the camera on top and, and take pictures as they go? That's the stuff that street view comes from. Culture is just things about different cultures, travel, and then the education piece is right here too. So the education pre-made ones, have tried to have built-in kind of activities that go along with it. Okay, so that's Voyager. This I'm feeling lucky is you just, is the next button and I just click on it and it'll take me somewhere around the world and give me a little bit of a blurb about it. Um, and it, the blurb always comes from Wikipedia and they'll give you a picture too. So that's the I'm feeling lucky. The next button is projects, which we'll spend the bulk of our time on here in a minute. And then below that is the map styles. So here's where I can say, and let's actually go back out so you can kind of see the differences. So here's the map. I can say, I want it clean, no borders. Or I want you to have borders and different labels. Let's go ahead and move that a little bit. 
so you can see the borders and the labels. Or I want everything. I want all the borders, labels, places, roads, everything labeled. Or you can customize it to say what you want to see. I want to see clouds or I want to see different kinds of places. In fact, if I choose places, I can say, well, I just really want to see schools or I just really want to see the attractions or whatever. So I can customize it as much as I want when it comes to looking at the different layers of the map or the labeling, I guess, of the map. And then the last icon over here is the measuring of distance and area. So get out of the map style. Okay. So on this, I can say, all right, I want to start here. So I'm going to click and then just drag to where I want to go, click, and it'll tell me the measurement. It'll give me the distance. And then I can go someplace else and click. When I'm done, I just click done. Um, and one thing I do want to point out is it allows you to change the distance. So I can look at it in centimeters or in meters or feet or whatever, whatever I want to look at it. And then if I want to start over, I just click start new and I can start measuring again. Okay. So those are all the different options you have here in this menu. We are going to move on to projects and hopefully get through uh, setting up an entire project uh, before my 30 minutes are up. So I've got 15 minutes to do it. It's really quite easy to do. And I hope that um, I think a lot of times people are hesitant about using these kinds of tools because they think it must be really complicated to do when in fact it's, it's, it's really not. Um, it's maybe there's a little bit of a learning curve, but after that, it's pretty easy to do. So we're going to go ahead and click new project and create project in Google Drive. They have this option to create it in a KML file. That's from back in the old uh, Google Earth versions. That's how you always kind of did these projects, but we don't have to do it that way and we're not going to. So we're going to use the create the project in Google Drive. Okay, it automatically saves as I go. So I don't know if you see this, it says saving. So every time I make a change, it's going to auto save. I'm going to go ahead and title the project. I can add my description. Okay, and now I'm going to start adding my features. So the first feature I'm going to add is going to be the New York Public Library. So I'm going to search to add that. Okay. And it's going to start looking for it. I'm going to choose this top option because I want to go to the main branch. And it's just going to zoom in. And here's the main branch of the New York Public Library. And if this is what I want to use, I want to add this to my project. You'll notice up here I have this little, I guess I'll call it a card, that gives tells me what it is that I'm looking at. And it tells me a little blurb about it. And, I'm just, and then it has a button, Add to Project. So I'm going to click Add to Project. And it's going to ask me which project do you want to put it in. Okay, so I can choose a different project if I want. And then I'm just going to save it. This is going to be added to my project. I can now, if you'll see over here on my left, it's listed there. And so I can now click on it, sorry, click on the edit button. And now I can edit the information that goes in into my project. So right now what's going in is the stuff that Google put in there for it. But I can add my own stuff if I want, and I want to. So I'm going to start by clicking this replace button and I'm going to start by adding a photo. So I click on the little camera icon, say select from drive. And I made a folder earlier and I'm going to choose the lions. They put little masks on the lions out there. So I'm going to choose that picture. Okay. Then I can add in a description if I like. So I'm going to go here and we're going to go ahead and exit so that I can get to my description. Here's my description I typed up for it. Actually, I didn't. I copied and pasted it. 
so I can copy and paste it in. And now I've added my first feature with a picture as well as with the description. Okay? And it automatically saves and it's all right there. Okay, so now I'm gonna add a new feature and this time I'm going to go to the Alexandria Library in Egypt. And it's gonna zoom out to that library. And I'm gonna say to go ahead and add it to my project, even though I really don't want this, this image, I'm gonna change that in a minute, but I'm gonna go ahead and say add to project okay, and save it. Now, I kind of want to edit the way this looks in my, my, um, my presentation. So I'm going to go here and to the edit option. It's going to take me down here. And really what I want to include in this is I want to include a picture from within the library. I don't want an outside looking picture. So what people do is they sometimes will take 360 images and they will put them in Google Street View. And then they become available to you from Google Street View or Google Earth or whatever. To see those pictures, what I have to do is take my little guy, so this little guy down here in the corner, I'm gonna click on him and I'm gonna drag him. And then, I don't know if you can see it very well, I'm kind of blind so I gotta lean in close. But there's these blue lines that pop up. That's the Google Street View. Those are the pictures taken with the car with the camera on top. And then there's also these little blue dots. And those are pictures, 360 pictures that people have taken. Well, some of them are 360, but some of them aren't. But three, uh, pictures here that people have taken. And I can put my little guy over that blue dot. And it should, if I can get in there, make sure I really get on the dot. Come on, little guy. Let's try a different one. There we go. I didn't like the first one. You'll get in there, and then this is the 360 picture. So that's what the inside of the library looks like. Okay. I kind of like this image right here because it shows these columns and the outside architecture and the inside art, it kind of makes sense to me. I don't know. So anyway, I'm going to use this one. And how I change that so that now it's using this instead of the um, image that I had originally picked is down here in this bottom kind of left-ish, well, the bottom left corner of the picture. There's a button that says capture this view. So I'm going to click capture this view. And that's now going to become the view that people will zoom to when they click to go to this feature. Again, they Google automatically uploads their information here, but I'm going to replace it with my own. And I am going to choose a picture that I had showing kind of the outside architecture because I think that's interesting. And then I'm also, I don't know if you noticed, but that picture pops up and then right underneath it, now it shows me my first picture, but I have this camera with the little plus sign so I can add yet another element. So I'm gonna choose that. And this time what I wanna add is a video, a YouTube video. So I'll select this link and then go to the YouTube option, paste in my link do a search and then here is some information about the old Alexandria library the ancient one from National Geographic so I'll click on that and select and now it becomes part of my presentation as well so when people go from my first feature which is the New York Public Library then they go to my second feature they'll see this image but then up in the corner they'll see the image of the outside architecture and if they click next, then they'll see this video. Um, and I can add my description that I typed up as well to that. All right. Okay, we'll add one more feature this time. We're gonna come here.
and I just typed in the address this time. So you can type in the name of a location um, or you can type in an address, whichever. And I'm going to kind of drag because I think this is the image I want. And then I can say add to project. Title it. And again, I'm, I'm going to go in and edit it using that little button to edit. And, oops, I can click on this little 3D option down here in the bottom right hand corner to change the angle of how things look. So if I choose that, see how it kind of flips it around? And I can kind of change the angle, give it a more 3D look. And then capture this view, and it'll capture the view for me. I can replace with pictures or whatever. Or one of the things that I thought was interesting is in this description box, if I wanted, rather than typing in a description, I could embed something with HTML code. So see these three little dots here in the description box. If I click on that, there's an option that says switch to HTML. And I can choose that and then type in HTML. So for example, go out to my wakelet and I have a bunch of reading recommendations that were made by our teachers here and I know I can embed that so I'm going to go up to the share button and get the embed code Let's go back to Google Earth and then just embed it So now to see it, to see this, all I have to do is click on present and you can see the whole presentation. Oh, there's one thing I wanted to show you. So there's stop one on the in the bottom um, left-hand corner. There's uh, arrows where I can move between the different features or there's a table of contents. I can go to feature number two Notice because I have two elements in this feature, I can use these arrows to go between the two elements, show my video or show the image. And then the Lee Summit West one, here it is. It doesn't look like it's fully loaded, all the images, or all the videos yet, but here's the wakelet embedded there. One thing I forgot to mention is one of the features you can add here is a full screen slide. And basically what this is, it's just a slide where I can um, add a background picture if I like. I can type in you know, a title. type in a description, whatever I like. And you can use that to kind of break up your presentation or you can use that as um, an introduction slide or an ending slide or whatever. So I'll show you again what it looks like now with that slide in there. So that's my slide that I added. And then I can go to stop one, stop two, stop three. Okay, so let's talk about sharing it and then we'll kind of wrap up. So one thing I do want to point out is that there is this little watch tutorial button at the bottom on the left hand side where I'm adding my elements. There's a watch tutorial button and I can use that to give me a very quick tutorial over anything that I can't I can't remember how to do. Um, and it just kind of pops up in the here. I'll just click on it real fast. It pops up in the top right hand corner. And when I push to play the video, it'll come full screen and show me how to do things there. So and then there's the help center. So the help's really nice kind of built in there. I can, because this is a Google product that's done in Google Drive, I can up here at the top, there's this little icon for sharing. I can click on that and share it with other collabor collaborators. So I can work on this in a group with other people, or I can sh copy the link and send it out to my kids that way. Um, so I wanted to point that piece out because that is different than Google Tour Creator where you're making your own and then um, 
you know, each kid would have to make their own if you were having kids do it. Uh, this is very, it, this is much like any other kind of Google um, document, spreadsheet, slideshow, whatever. You can have multiple people working on it at the same time. So, and you can share it much the same way you share anything in Google. So there's that. All right, and the last thing, last couple of things, I guess. Um, virtual field trip ideas, ways that you might use this in your classroom. Uh, you can, th these are all links to various tours that are pre-made, that Google pre-made. But they kind of give you an idea of how people are using them. So storytelling, covering a particular author, or doing a literature trip over a particular book or novel, uh, visiting landmarks, looking at things from a scientific perspective, uh, history, following history, this one's um, following Magellan. So there's lots of different ways that you can use this in class, um, either you making them to share with students or having students make them to share with you. Also in the slideshow presentation, there's links here to help you. One is the straight to Google Earth. Another is to their education tab. Um, there's a tutorial here on the, the introduction kind of tutorial, and then another one on specifically on each of the different features. And then here's one on different activities that people would suggest maybe using how to use this in a classroom setting. So, all right, I am one minute over, but I think I hit everything. Is there, are there any questions? or comments or suggestions or anything <laughs> well megan and i are happy to help um anybody who is interested in maybe trying this out but hasn't ever um hasn't ever done anything like this before and is kind of apprehensive about it or who just wants another set of brains to kind of help uh, go through some of the different options that you could maybe see happening with this. All right, I don't see any questions. Feel free to just unmute if you have one too. Okay, I think that's it. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate your coming. I hope you're all doing well and you just uh, let us know, let Megan or I know if you have 